Hey everyone, I hope your summer breaks have been fantastic, even though it's just the first couple weeks, but I hope it's been awesome. Um, so far, my summer has been super awesome. Uh, I'm working as a construction inspection intern, uh, so I would show you my really fantastic tan lines from my construction vest, uh, but they make me a little sad, so I'm not going to. <laughs> the great thing about my job is that I have a lot of time to think. Um, I often have to just watch people move stuff around or um, basically inspect and supervise what they're doing. Uh, which doesn't take much brain power. So I've been praying a lot in that time and just trying to find out what God wants to teach me this summer. So far I've noticed that he really wants me to start finding my words in him, uh, that I'm his child and that earthly definitions or perceptions of me have no merit because I'm defined by him alone and that I really need to get out of my own head. <laughs> uh, so I'm really excited to see all of you soon. <laughs> I know we're only a few weeks into summer, but I really miss my family at CCH. And I hope some of you are considering coming to NSC in July with us. I'll be there and can't wait to discuss our upcoming year at CCH with you all. Which is why I'm super excited uh, to share a scripture for this week. We're diving into Exodus uh, chapter 6, verse 27 to 10. Uh, now I just want to pray for you guys before we begin. Um, Lord, please help everyone who is watching to hear what they need from your word. Uh, Lord, allow them to open their ears, minds, and hearts to whatever. Um, now to recap what we've learned so far, um, we just went through the family history of Moses and Aaron. Uh, to begin this reading this week, we jump right into the Lord explaining to Moses and Aaron that they are to tell the Pharaoh king everything that the Lord tells them. The Lord tells Moses and Aaron that they are to tell the Pharaoh to let the Israelites out of his country, but the Lord said to them that he would harden the Pharaoh's heart to all of these requests. The Lord then promises to lay his hand on the Egyptians in judgment and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. The Lord tells, Mo uh, the Lord tells Moses and Aaron to go to the Pharaoh and for Aaron to throw his staff down, so it becomes a snake. And when they do this, the Pharaoh summons wise men and sorcerers to do the exact same thing. Aaron's staff swallowed theirs, uh, but the Pharaoh hardened his heart to their request to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Uh, next came the plague of blood, where Aaron strikes the river, and the fish die, and the waters change to blood, but the magicians do the exact same thing, and so the Pharaoh's heart is hardened to their request. The plague of frogs came next, where the frogs came and covered the land, but the magicians did the exact same thing. Uh, and, but the Pharaoh asked Moses and Aaron to Pray to their Lord to take away the frogs. Then he would let the Israelites offer sacrifices to the Lord. Moses prayed, and the Lord ceased, but the Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not let the people out of Egypt. The plague of gnats came. The magicians could not make the gnats appear like Aaron did, and these magicians said to the Pharaoh that this is the finger of God. But the Pharaoh would not budge. The plague of flies was next. The Lord sent dense swarms of flies into the palace and home to the officials. Pharaoh told Moses and Aaron that he would let their people offer sacrifices to their God if they took the flies away. But Moses prayed to the Lord, the, uh, the flies ceased, but the Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And the plague of livestock was next, where all of the livestock was killed except the Israelites. But the Pharaoh would budge. The plague of boils was next, where the Lord told Moses and Aaron to take handfuls of soot and toss it in the air to cause boils to break out on people and animals. When they did this, the people couldn't stand because of the boils on them, but the Pharaoh's heart was still hard. Next, the plague of hail, the worst hailstorm that had ever fallen on Egypt, struck down people and animals, except in Goshen, where the Israelites were. Then the Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron to pray for the storm to stop, and then he would let them go. But Moses prayed, and the storm stopped. The Pharaoh would not let the Israelites leave. In a not-so-short synopsis, that is what we are discussing in today. The main thing I wanted to highlight from the scripture is the unfailing commitment that Moses and Aaron had to the Lord in his request. It must have been exhausting to continue to go to the Pharaoh and continuously have their requests be shot down by him. But Moses and Aaron kept going. They kept their unwavering faith, unwavering obedience to the Lord. 
it just makes me think of our theme for this upcoming year, going after God's own heart. Moses and Aaron continuously kept their faith, faith that God would deliver their people from Egypt. They served the Lord when they didn't see any hope in getting their people out. The Pharaoh was not budging. His heart had been hardened, but they persisted. Let us strive to be like Moses and Aaron in these chapters, that we may hold true to God's word and trust Him. Um, through the entire scripture, the uh, couple passages that stuck out to me were Exodus 9, uh, 15 and 16. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. And I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed to all of you. These verses just go to show me how big and how grand our God is. He is the most powerful being, and we have no possible way to be able to understand His might, but He loves us so much. He gave His one and only Son for us to live in eternity with Him. What an unbelievable sacrifice by the most powerful being in the universe. Blessed are we, his children, that we have such a generous and loving Father looking out for us. I hope you guys found some encouragement in that, and I hope you don't mind my rambling. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your summer, and I look forward to seeing some of you in July at NSC or else back at school in August. Live set.